All right, if you had trouble getting the solutions to the U try exercises in the simplifying trig expressions video, I'll show you how I would do these two exercises. I need to say up front that there are multiple ways of doing it. So if you started to go in a different direction and you're wondering if you could have made that work, I'd welcome you to bring your work into office hours and I'd be glad to go over it with you and see if perhaps there was another way that you were uh, embarking upon that would have worked. All right, starting with the first one. The first thing I would do is, again, not forget the algebra. Look at that and FOIL it out. It'll often be to our benefit, generally be to our benefit, I would say, to FOIL out any um, binomial, uh, mul binomials being multiplied like we have here. So again, I'll just say this is an algebra step. FOIL that out. This should be plenty familiar to you from your, um, from your quadratic days in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. That's what we would get. Please do not make the mistake of just tr trying to distribute that squaring the exponent in some way. That's not legit. Okay, that's over secant of x, and let me go ahead and do two things in this first step. Let's also look at the second denominator here, and let's use our Pythagorean identity on that. So remember the Pythagorean identity that says um, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. That could be rearranged to say that 1 minus sine squared of x equals cosine squared of x. And that does seem like that would be to our benefit, to take these two uh, expressions and replace it with a single cosine squared. So again, you'll often have to make that choice. Is it to your benefit to use a Pythagorean identity? I think with a little bit of experience, you'll get a pretty good sense of when it makes sense to use it versus when it makes sense not to. So let's get rid of that. And OK, let's step back and look for some more clues. Um, algebraically, I could definitely do something here, right? I hope you're looking at that and agreeing that, yes, we could reduce that. Remember, that's really just cosine of x over cosine of x times cosine of x. And if I think of that top as having a 1 being multiplied by it, then when I cross out the cosines, I'm left with 1 over cosine. So let's do that. That's just a little bit of algebra. And I'm also going to uh, look at the top of the first uh, uh, fraction there. And once again, I see a trig function being squared. And just because this 1 is not sitting right next to the tangent squared, it doesn't matter. We can still use the, uh, the Pythagorean identity. You need to remember the one that says 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Uh, it's probably going to take you a little bit of practice to, um, to really be comfortable with those second two Pythagorean identities, but that's what you got to do. So again, those two give us a secant squared of x via Pythagorean identity. I'll just add the plus 2 tangent x and keep it over that same denominator, secant of x. All right, now I'll repeat. There, there are multiple ways you could go from here. I could see a couple different ways we could do this. I think what I'm inclined um, to do is to use a reciprocal identity right here. Um, 1 over cosine, well, that's just secant of x, right? And so let's use the reciprocal identity and call that secant of x. And I'm already looking ahead to my, to my next move. This definitely feels sort of like a strategy game here. I'm looking ahead to my next move, and um, I'm looking at this. I'll just write this first fraction down. But I'm looking at that first fraction and saying, OK, that has the denominator of secant of x. And the second, if I want to combine that second term, I need a common denominator. So let's multiply this by another secant of x over secant of x. Again, this just equals 1. And you can always multiply something by 1. And let's now, now that I have a common denominator, let's combine. And I'm going to see something good here. I'm going to see that that secant x squared up top plus 2 tangent of x now that I have a, a, a common denominator, I can just go ahead and add in this numerator, or subtract that numerator. And I see something good. I see that the secant squares up top are going to cancel. Secant squared minus secant squared gives us 0. So again, my move here was just some, um, we did a little, uh, from this step to this step, we did a common denominator. 
That's worth noting. And then we just canceled out some, some terms, uh, some like terms. So now I have two tangent x over secant of x. If you had struggled up to this point, I'm, I'm trusting you could finish it off, so, but I'll just go ahead and, as a formality, say that we'll use our quotient identity. Um, this is sort of along the lines of thinking, let's turn everything into sines and cosines. So the top will become 2 sine x over cosine x. I've seen uh, a number of students over the years accidentally put a 2 on the top and bottom. No, think of this 2 up here. Think of that as a 2 over 1. So the 2 over 1, the 2 just gets uh, multiplied by the sine um, and the cosine on the bottom. You can think of it as being multiplied by 1, but you, of course, don't have to write the 1. And that's all over secant of x. Let's go ahead and put that in terms of sine or cosine. Let's use our reciprocal identity. And that would tell us that that is 1 over cosine of x. And if you're comfortable enough with your fractions to say, hey, a cosine in that denominator cancels a cosine in that denominator, good for you. Otherwise, if you would prefer, um, do whatever you're comfortable and confident in. Just flip the fraction, do the whole fraction division thing, 2 sine x over cosine x times the reciprocal of the bottom. And if that gives you a little more confidence in your answer, by all means do so. Our final answer is 2 sine of x. So once again, the idea is if you type in that whole ugly expression for any value of x, it's the same as just typing 2 sine of x for that same value. This really pays off in calculus where we do, we do some crazy, ugly things with, uh, with trig expressions in calculus. And trust me, um, trying to do some of the things you do in calculus with this first expression would seem difficult, if not near impossible, whereas doing the same thing to our final answer, 2 sine x, would be a piece of cake. All right, the second one. Um, once again, I preface this by saying there are multiple ways one could go about this. But I'm inclined to start with, um, let's start with our uh, uh, turning everything into sines and cosines. Let's do that strategy. So let's do the all sine and cosine strategy. Um, and we're going to uh, do use the quotient identity to do that. So. Uh, the top becomes 1 plus sine x over cosine x. The bottom becomes 1 plus cosine x over sine x. Um, from this point, I see a fraction with, with fractions within fractions. That makes students uncomfortable, but you're going to need to get used to it. It comes up all the time in calculus. Um, let's look at that first that, uh, fraction within the numerator, and let's turn that into a, let's do a common denominator. So. What I mean by that is, let's say that that 1 is really, oops, mistake, uh, a cosine is what I mean to write. That 1 is really cosine x over cosine x, right? That 1 right there. And now I have a common denominator. Um, let's do a similar thing to the bottom. So for this bottom fraction, that 1 right there is really, uh, let's call it a sine x over sine x, because that gives us a common denominator, plus a cosine over sine x. And when I, when I uh, go ahead and combine those, now that I have common denominators in the top, the top becomes, I'm going to do two things in one step here, just so I can fit it on this one screen, and, I, and I'm hoping you can hang here. I now have cosine plus sine x over cosine x. That's this top right here. Um, let's do the same thing to the bottom. Let's go ahead and divide out that fraction we're going to get on the bottom. So rather than do a big fraction bar and then do that, the denominator underneath, let's go ahead and anticipate that we're going to be dividing out that fraction. So that bottom is going to give us sine x plus cosine x over sine. So that means in the next step we would multiply by sine x over sine x plus cosine x. And I see something good here. I see that that and that cancel each other out. And so that's going to give me sine x over cosine x. And of course, with our 
quotient ID, that is simply equal to tangent of x. Barely got it on one screen. So again, this original thing for any value of x, you type that into your calculator for any value of x, it's the same as just typing in tangent of x.